Hi, Darren Mangum here, uh, securities lawyer. Uh, today I wanted to talk about, uh, again, opportunity zones and opportunity zone funds. Um, we obviously have had a lot of experience in setting up uh, opportunity zone funds. And uh, uh, again, they're uh, increasingly uh, important, especially in uh, uh, today's economy, uh, they're going to be increasingly important to help facilitate uh, investment capital um, around the uh, around the country. Um, again, in, in my previous videos, I talk about uh, what you know where where those opportunity zones are. Uh, my prediction is that they may be expanding uh, the scope of opportunity zones. Um, in the near future, but um, as to be that as it may, uh, there's a lot of questions when it comes to opportunity zones. One, one is um, uh, you know the, the IRS takes a very practical approach when it comes to uh, determining whether a business qualifies. Uh, one question that I get is, oh, what if what if my property or my business is not located in an opportunity zone. Um, yeah, obviously, that it should be pretty obvious that, that it has to be inside the, the, uh, the um, opportunity zone boundary, uh, which is uh, they were created based on census tracts. Uh, you know, there's a map that I can share with you that basically goes over, hey, these are all, in, you know, you're either inside the opportunity zone or not. In some strange, you know, instances, the boundary cuts right across a piece of property, uh, and the IRS uses a pretty practical rule, hey, at least 50% or more of the property has to be inside the, uh, the opportunity zone. Um, and that, that when it, that's when it comes to the actual physical location of the property. Uh, now, there's some other, there's some other aspects that people may not be aware of where, especially when you have a business that has multiple locations, right? Like let's say you have a, a corporate office and then you have, you know, maybe a manufacturing, or maybe you have a factory and maybe you're spread all over the country, you have multiple locations. Um, it still qualifies as an opportunity zone uh, business or investment. Uh, if you're like an opportunity zone fund and you're investing into that business or if you're the business itself, right? Uh, you, um, as long as 50% uh, or more of the hours uh, that, um, I mean, there's, there's a couple of safe harbors, one of which is the hours uh, in which your employees work. Let's say inside the opportunity zone, you know, you had 51,000 hours and outside the opportunity zone, maybe at the corporate office, you had 49,000 hours. Well, guess what? That total 100,000 uh, hour total, um, you're, you're still qualified because a majority of the hours that were expended for services related to that business were performed inside the opportunity zone. So you qualify, right? So it's great. Uh, again, again, for places that have multiple locations. Um, the other, uh, one of the other safe harbors is that the, the dollar amounts that you receive from the business, right? That's another way to qualify. If the majority of your income is received for services inside of the opportunity zone. Let's say most of the hours were spent outside the opportunity zone, but the, the actual dollars uh, that were paid were paid for services that were rendered inside the opportunity zone. That qualifies as well. Um, uh, and so uh, anyway, so this 50% uh, test is, I mean, it seems like it's common sense, but, um, but yeah, as far as uh, as it relates to opportunity zones, uh, you know, I think it's important to realize that the, that the rules are a lot more liberal and generous than maybe we uh, you would initially think, especially if you're thinking, well, shoot, I've got, a, you know, maybe I do want to, maybe you have a business that you may want to open up an, an, a factory or open up a, a, a a, an affiliate a subsidiary inside the opportunity zone and that way and you know obviously but yet you know maybe your corporate office is outside the opportunity zone that's still fine as long as you abide you know the, these rules apply you know certainly you could attract capital to that investment and um, or if you're if you have your opportunity zone fund and you're looking at investing in a, in a say a a multifamily housing opportunity or a real estate opportunity or uh, whatever it happens to be and you're saying okay well hey I'm investing into that uh, opportunity zone area and so uh, even though I may have operations outside of the opportunity zone I don't have to 
100% move my office down there to maybe take advantage. I could certainly, uh, you know, obviously you're going to want to uh, talk to uh, a tax lawyer, a CPA, or, you know, certainly our, our practice when it comes to securities law, uh, we, we, uh, our primary uh, job is to make sure that you're compliant with uh, federal and state securities laws. But, you know, obviously some of the impetus by, you know, why, why do you want to create this uh, is this investment fund? Well, maybe it is to take advantage of uh, some of those tax incentives in in these opportunity zone areas, or it may help you facilitate uh, attracting investors that may not otherwise invest, right? Because because why well, you have this opportunity zone uh, nexus or connection, and and, uh, and so that's the uh, that's part of the attraction, right? So anyway. Um, Anyway, hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, again, we'd love to help you with your Opportunity Zone fund or your private placement memorandum or whatever it happens to be when you're, again, when you're raising capital. Hopefully you are uh, thinking about uh, talking to uh, uh, a securities lawyer and we'd love to help, uh, we'd love to be your securities lawyer. So anyway, uh, if this is helpful, uh, feel free to like or subscribe and uh, we'll share it with uh, someone you know who might be, uh, who might be interested. And uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.